In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Amana side discharge system and the Lennox Elite 18 XPV. Uh, we're going to be doing a deep dive on which of these systems qualify for heat pump tax credit, specifically in which regions. We're going to be talking about the efficiency ratings, the specifications, the sound decibel ratings, really just doing a deep dive comparison, head-to-head -head matchup between these two systems. And if you're tuning in for the first time and haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you find this content helpful, subscribing to the channel is a free way that you can show your support and it is much appreciated. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. Now I have both these systems pulled up on my screen and we're just gonna basically talk about some of the specifications. So this Amana side discharge system, um, the reason we are comparing this with the Lennox Elite EL18 XPV is that both these systems are around the same SEER rating. They're both inverter systems. They're both inverter heat pumps. They're both about 17 to 18 SEER 2 rated systems, and they're both pretty quiet. We'll talk about each of these individually and see how they stack up, but that's why we're comparing these two systems, even though they're a little different, because this system is a side discharge system, whereas the EL18 XPV is a traditional system in that it discharges air off the top, so it's traditional style of condenser that you're used to seeing outside of your house. And so just jumping in first, we'll look at, again, the SEER rating here is 17.5 HSPF2 rating, which is an efficiency rating that's really related to heat pump performance that stands for heating seasonal performance factor and we explain that more in another video that I'll make sure to link at the end for your convenience but the bottom line is that this particular system it's pretty efficient it's an inverter it's side discharge it shines is how quiet it is so in quiet mode it says it's as low as 45 decibels now I will tell you there's a caveat to these side discharge systems in terms of which markets they perform best in and we'll talk about that in a second but let's take a look at the after looking at these specs let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, Lennox system and see where this stacks up. So as you can see here, the uh, SEER rating on this says up to SEER 2, up to 21.6. The HSPF2 rating is up to 8.7. Uh, this is also an Energy Star certified system. So basically they're kind of neck and neck. Obviously the SEER 2 rating on the Lennox EL18 XPV is going to be have higher capacity or higher efficiency options available. And what makes the systems vary is actually the matchup. And so I've, I've got this pulled up here. This is the energystar.gov website, which unfortunately I don't like the new layout of this. They used to have all the heat pumps laid out here and you could literally pull up a series of heat pumps and then you could navigate to find out what they qualify for. But basically if we're looking for these particular systems and we go in here and we search for what qualifies, you can just type in any of the model numbers that you're looking for and it will basically narrow it down. It is very finicky in that you can see it almost said, oh, that's not coming up. It's a very finicky system. That's why I don't like that they changed the layout like this. Bottom line, as you can see the system, it says, yes, it's tax credit eligible, not in the north, but yes, in the south. Now, if we go look at the Amana system, now you can see there's 589 matchups of this. Now, what is a matchup? Well, a matchup is basically a pairing of the outdoor unit, which is this box we just looked at here, right? This is your outdoor unit and the indoor unit. So that's going to be your air handler or your furnace. And when you pair those in combination, the efficiency will actually change. And so they're required to report efficiency data on each of these particular matchups when they're developing a system. So as you can see here, there's a matchup for this is the two ton version with this particular indoor air handler and this particular indoor furnace. So both of these systems can be set up for those, whether it's going to be paired with a furnace or with an air handler. It does go up to, I believe, it, let's see what tonnages qualify because I believe it qualifies up up to it might the two ton might be the only one that actually qualifies in this particular that's what it looks like from this particular situation now if we look at the amana version and we go in here and we look up the a s z s6 and we'll see if that pulls it up sometimes it's a little okay there it goes so it pulled that up for us so now as you can see one of the biggest differences which maybe again this chart i don't like this new setup that they have they used to have a nice easy to read uh, layout basically this says it's tax credit eligible in the north but not in the south so the southern regions are going to be states like Texas, Florida, Arizona, any place where it's hot. Northern regions is like Utah, Colorado, northern areas. Nevada is technically considered a southern region. So basically this system, the Amana version, does qualify. Now this it qualifies in the two-ton version all the way up to, I believe, the four-ton qualifies as well. So you can see this is the three-ton, three-and-a-half-ton, and the four-ton version. They do have matchups available. And these matchups are going to vary. So this is a different core 
coil. This is a different furnace. So you can pair that with either a furnace or an air handler, as you can see here. So it's a pretty versatile unit in that respect. So that's one thing. But again, this system does not qualify in the South. And we'll talk about why when we start to do a deep dive into some of the specs. But back to going through some of the differences between these two systems, it has the biggest benefit is obviously it's a, it, they advertise, you know, that smaller footprint because any of these side discharge systems, if you're dealing with a, a tight lot line in the city, this is a great option, especially if this is going on a patio or something like that, just because it is quiet, it's not going to be as disruptive as in terms of the amount of space it takes up as some of those larger systems. So that's something to definitely consider. And looking at this, that's kind of the biggest difference between the, the Lennox system. As you can see, like I said, the two ton version is the only one that actually qualifies in the southern states. But the this Lennox system, it does not qualify in the north in the colder climates. And the reason it does not qualify in the north is because the efficiency ratings in order to qualify as a cold climate heat pump in the northern regions, a heat pump has to maintain 70% of its capacity that it has at 47 degrees, it has to maintain 70% of that capacity at five degrees Fahrenheit. And it also has to maintain a COP, which again is explained in that video that we'll link at the end if you haven't watched that already, which is coefficient of performance. And that's a relation of how efficient a heat pump is in terms of energy consumed to its BTU or heat output. And a cold climate heat pump, um, in order to qualify in the northern states, like the Daikin Fit does, or like this Amana S series site discharge system does, in order to qualify in the north, it has to do both of those things I just mentioned, which the Lennox system does not. However, the Amana system does. So as you can see, this system is going to be a little bit more efficient for cold climates. But what about hotter climates? Would you install something like this in Phoenix? Well, the short answer is maybe because we've actually installed several side discharge systems in Phoenix. We've had great reviews from them. Customers love them. But one of the things you want to be aware of is how they actually perform in those high ambient temperatures. Now, I'm only going to be reviewing the high ambient performance from the or the performance data from the Amana system and not from the Lennox system because Lennox actually only makes the, the heat pump brochure available. They don't actually have the same performance data. So if we're going in here and looking at the performance data that I'm referencing, I'm looking at this specific system. So this is the, we'll pick out the expanded cooling data. So this is a, there's a couple types of systems and I want to just point this out. So as you see in the nomenclature here where it says AS6, is, this is kind of confusing. It ends in A is the bottom line in this number right here. This is a standard version of the heat pump. However, if you look at the enhanced version, there is an enhanced version and that has an E like you can see here where it says EA in the nomenclature. And that's the only difference. And so when we look at these two systems, you're going to see the difference in terms of heating performance and cooling performance is pretty substantial. So when we, it might not seem substantial on the surface, but let's go ahead and just for the purpose of demonstration, we'll pick out this four ton system. So this is a standard four ton system. This is not the Amana enhanced. You can see it doesn't have the E in the nomenclature there. At 115 degrees outdoor ambient temperature, which we see those temperatures probably depending on the summer between 30 and 60 days out of the year in Phoenix. So it does hit that temperature quite a few days in the summer. And if you look at it here, maybe not 115, I'm sorry, it hits, it breaks 110 between 30 and 60 days out of the summer, uh, depending on the year, uh, but it will hit 115 on some of those days. And when you look at how the system performs, this is a four ton heat pump. So that number right there, this is 34,000 BTUs. That's literally less than three tons of capacity at that higher ambient outdoor air temperature of 115 degrees. Whereas if you scroll down here, you can see when it's only 95 degrees out, which is still pretty hot, it has almost four tons of capacity. So 47,000 BTUs of capacity. So it loses quite a bit of capacity on those higher days or hotter days. However, if you look at the enhanced version and let's see, we want to do a neck and neck comparison. Let's see, that's the three and a half ton version. This is the four ton version. When you look at the four ton version, you can see the system, it still derates de quite a bit, but it actually only derates down to 38,000 BTUs. So it's still about 3.2 tons of cooling in terms of deration. Now, if we looked at the Lennox manual and pulled it up, we would see deration there as well. The truth is, is all systems, when it starts hitting 110, 115, 120 degrees, which you do get in the high desert and in some of these really hot climates on, you know, some of the hottest days of the year, it will hit those high temperatures and you will get some deration. So that's normal. But the difference is that this is an extra basically 6,000 BTUs or half a ton of cooling that the system is not losing in terms of capacity on those higher days, which and things are sized accordingly in Phoenix to keep up with it. However, one thing to keep in mind is that typically upflow systems or systems like this where you have a traditional condenser versus a side discharge condenser like the Amana, these 
tend to perform better in those higher ambient climates. One thing to keep in mind though, is if we go down and we look at cold weather performance, this is where this thing actually really shines. And this is what makes the difference between a lot of these systems. So if we looked at the, the heating data for the enhanced version, you can see this is where these types of systems stand out. And this is why this system qualifies. Now, just because we don't have this data available for the Linux product line, there's no way to kind of compare it. So I'll explain why the system qualifies and why the Linux system does not qualify for the tax credit in the northern region, because this is a better cold climate heat pump, whereas the Linux is going to have better performance in hotter climates. And that has to do with EER rating, because the EER rating on this system is actually too low. So on the Amana system, it has an EER rating of 10, whereas the EER rating on the 18 XPV, which is the only one that qualifies, has an EER rating of 11.7 or higher uh, because it has to in order to qualify for that efficiency or that high efficiency tax credit. But as you can see here, this is the two ton version of the Amana system at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. It has 23,000 BTUs of heating output, which is about two tons of heating. However, at five degrees Fahrenheit, it's still putting out 16,100 BTUs of heating capacity. However, if we compare this with the standard version of the uh, MANA system, this is the two ton version right here. You can see same thing, 23.2 on the, or 23,000 BTUs on the heating output. However, at five degrees Fahrenheit, that drops to 14,000 BTUs, which is below that 70% threshold that's required in order to hit the heat pump tax credit, which is why that regular system does not qualify, but the enhanced version does. Now, both these systems are going to be good options. And one of the things in kind of either climate, except I would not go with the Lennox Elite system in a northern climate, just because it's not going to keep up at those colder temperatures, because it's not going to maintain capacity, it's going to have a reduced capacity pretty quickly. So that means you're going to be setting your changeover temp around maybe 20 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you live in a very cold climate, it doesn't really work. Whereas the Amana system, it might depending on your operating costs, whether or not you're on solar, whether or not you have battery backups, for example, those that's that's going to determine whether or not this system when you set the changeover temp but you're on the Amana system you're probably going to set your changeover temp anywhere between five degrees Fahrenheit and on the high end 20 degrees Fahrenheit if you're in an area where you have expensive electricity and very cheap gas which is actually true in Colorado so for most of our customers they prefer to run their heat pumps just because of how they operate and we tend to set the switch over temperature somewhere around 15 degrees Fahrenheit just because things tend to keep up very well at that point you're not really getting a lot of deration if we go back to this chart here and we look at the enhanced version of this system right here, you can see that it's at 23,000 BTUs and it doesn't even really break 20,000 BTUs until it gets down to 15 and then it's at 19,000 BTUs still. So it's really only using 4,000 BTUs of heat loss, which is less than half a ton of heating capacity along the way. And so that's why we normally set the changeover temp around that point. And just, and also you can see the COP is a little bit higher at that temperature as well. COP is coefficient of performance. And that's a metric I mentioned earlier that again will be explained more in depth in a separate video where we do talk about more in depth. But which one is right for you? Should you get the side discharge system? Which one would I get for my particular house? I'll answer that. Before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please smash that like button or consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's a free way that you can show support for the channel and it is much appreciated. So that being said, I happen to live in a colder climate. So obviously in my climate, I would go with the Amana system because it's going to have better cold climate performance. And if I was in a Southern region, I would still go with the Amana system over the Lennox system. The main reason, in my opinion, there's one downside to the Amana system. The Amana system in the those hotter climates, and it has to do with performance data in terms of decibel ratings. And if we look at the decibel ratings here, you can see this system, depending on, it can go as low as it's saying 48 decibels here. This is in the one and a half ton version, 53 up to 69. And and it says the max, the total unit sound rating can be as high as 74 decibels on the five ton version. Well, the same is true for the Lennox system. However, this system on the shoulder months, even in a hot climate is going to be a little bit quieter because, or at night when you're running it, it's going to be a little bit quieter than the Lennox because the Lennox system can actually only get down to 61 decibels is what they advertise in terms of their sound rating. So when they talk about the decibel rating of this particular system, when we pull this up and look at the brochure. That's where I saw that number. I'm not just making it up, but it says as low as 61 decibels on the EL18 XPV. So it's still a pretty quiet system. However, the Amana is going to be quieter. The caveat is in hot temperatures. So one thing we 
we've discovered is that this system is definitely quiet in my opinion, but it's still going to be quieter than a single stage system or a two stage system or any multi stage system. But it's not going to be as quiet as like a top of the line inverter system. Because if you look at this Lenox Elite system, if you live in the south and it's 115 degrees out and your system kicks on for the day, this is going to ramp up a little bit slower. And this is actually going to be a little bit quieter at first. So this will be closer to 61 decibels, whereas the Amana systems will actually ramp up to boost mode quicker. And so what boost mode is, so there's, you can see there's normal mode for heating and normal mode for cooling. There's also a boost mode for heating and cooling. And what will happen is basically you can see in quiet mode, this is the, the decibel ratings and the sound pressure readings. However, but when things are in boost mode, it's substantially noisier. And I'm going to see if they have the boost mode data in here because I've looked at this before, but basically those decibel ratings, it ramps up to 100% capacity pretty quickly. And so what that means is that you're going to get on a three ton system, you're going to have a 68 decibel operating throughout the day on those hotter days. It's not going to modulate as much because it's just a really hot day out. Whereas the Lennox system will modulate a little bit more on those days. And that's probably how it achieves um, those higher efficiency ratings. That being said, it might be a better option for in the Southern region. Like I said, even it, for me, just I'm all about sound and comfort and I care about it more at night when I'm sleeping. And that's going to be when it's going to be below the threshold of 100 degrees Fahrenheit and mo even the hottest markets, right? It typically drops below 100 at night. Like I was just in Phoenix and it was when we, you know, I got in at midnight and I want to say it was still 95 degrees out. So it was pretty hot, but this thing's not going to be running in boost mode. And so this heat pump would still be operating in quiet mode or quieter mode when it counts, which is when you're sleeping, in my opinion. And during the day, I'm not really around, so it wouldn't bother me as much. But if you're someone that works from home, and maybe wants your office is right by the system, maybe go for the Lennox system because that's probably going to be overall more quieter on hotter days. But on the shoulder season, the Amana system will be definitely a little bit quieter of an option just because it's a side discharge system and it's designed for that. So we hope you found that content helpful. And if you happen to be in the market for HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service ratings on Google, as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas. I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area, some of which have even been featured on our show. This way you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or in-floor radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region. We're partnering with those contractors. So click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted HVAC dope show contractor in your area. As promised earlier, there's a video popping up on the screen right now about heat pump efficiency ratings, as well as a few other videos that YouTube thinks you should watch. So check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.